to... guys welcome back to check the vending machines uh off the top of the podcast zach yes. we should probably mention real quick um why we have changed names yes um and it's dude it it was it was a hard decision to make it was um it was definitely difficult you know it was a lot of back and forth between me and you because um you ended up finding out that there was um another podcast out in the uh in the world that has uh not only a similar name to us but a similar content to us as, as well uh and it felt a little bit uncomfortable to be that close to somebody else and uh they'd had the name uh before us unfortunately so um so we decided to make the switch uh to check the vending machine and, and which is a reference to um, Jurassic Park, m- a movie one of the that best we both movies love, ever yeah. made. Absolutely, and um, it was tough, man, because we really liked that our previous name, and we put a lot of work into that. And um, it sucks because the other podcast, which we never heard of until yeah. until I just found out found it and I recommended videos, but like it's like two of the letters of the podcast, both podcasts were named three were three letter three word yeah. podcast titles. Two were the same, and the third one meant the same thing. Well, they were both a play off the same thing, which is the yeah. license to kill from James Bond. So, you know, ours was license to view, and theirs was license to watch, which is basically the same yeah. thing. Right, right, right. Even though I think technically, if we wanted to do stats, we have we combined two James Bond titles. Yeah. With uh, you know, what's what's the what's the one that's killing it? Decision decision to kill or license? No. License to kill. Something to ki- license to. There's two. I can't remember which other one was. One of the ones I don't. I don't care about. Now what's the I, other I, one? What's the second one? I I think there is a here. I'm gonna do Bond movies, and like we didn't do it on purpose. Um, but there was definitely like, oh, a View to Kill. Oh yeah. yeah. License to Kill and then View to Kill. It's like oh, hey, we use two. We combine two different hey. get movies to the podcast title. Which we didn't, obviously. Yeah. Just license to kill. But um, so we rebranded again, uh, to, to save ourselves some, you know, frustrations with dealing with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and hey, welcome back. We're gonna keep the same numbering. So this episode one forty five. Here we go. Of basically just what I call the podcast. That's all I say every week is just the podcast. Yeah. I'm Jason. That's Zach. This is a pop culture podcast where two best friends get together, drink some drinks, yes, and talk about random things of pop culture media. And this week we're supposed to, and I say this with a with a grain of salt because okay. our plan that you proposed, Zach, last week, right, for the next few weeks, uh-huh. is to review every Daniel Craig James Bond movie <laughs> leading into No Time to Die, October seventh, eighth, one of the two of those dates. I can't remember which one. I think it's the seventh. And so the plan is today to review uh, Casino Royale from yes. two thousand six. And that is still the plan. Okay. But the problem that I have with the plan is that the, a major wrench of zeros and ones got thrown into the mix. That's true. Basically, a couple of days after we decided what we were going to do, uh, we got the word that, um, look, as, as far as pop culture goes, this is breaking news, guys. Yeah. Uh, and, and since we don't do news in the podcast anymore. No, not really. Since we, we only really do stuff, we bring that. stuff, you know, I mean, it's like this, you know, we bring stuff up when it interests us, but we don't, you know, go deep diving for news about every little thing anymore. Yeah, I and mean, no, for the first, for the for the majority of the podcast lifespan, that was kind of what we did, was break yeah. down new stuff, it, we have weekly stuff. Mm-hmm. So now that we don't do that, I only see news when I'm like, plugged into what I care about. Yeah. And this is obviously something that we both care about, so I can't not bring the discussion that we had from text to the pod because it's the matrix it's true matrix yeah, resurrection 
first trailer. Right. And I don't even care about PlayStation. I don't care about God of War. Dude, which is honestly, a fun okay, hold on. Now, I'm about to stop you right there. Because that PlayStation showcase was pretty fucking good. No, it was great. Ragnarok looks great. Ragnarok looks, looks great. great. Spider-Man is awesome. Wolverine's all about it. First spoken. All about that. What was the other big ones? Those were the biggest ones. But the thing is that when all those things pale in comparison to what is the Matrix. That's true. So if I have to pick one thing that I'm going to derail James Bond, <laughs> it's going to be the Matrix. That's true. You know. So speaking of that, we'll just we'll just We'll just talk about it real fast. Okay. And if we talk quickly about it and go right into Casino Royale, okay. if, if we end up having to do two movies in one movie next week, then uh, hey, we do what we gotta hey, do. Hey, you know, we do but what we gotta do, but it's the Matrix. Yeah. So, Zach, Matrix Resurrection. How did you feel after the trailer? Um, did you did you were you expecting anything in particular? Did you did it deliver? Was it weirder? Did you were you happy with it? What, what were your thoughts? I don't know. If I was expecting anything in particular, um, so as far as like expectations, like I don't think it like failed to meet my expectations or anything like that. There or what? I didn't come away from it severely disappointed, um, but I definitely have, and I had I've watched it multiple times since it came out, and I also mm-hmm. had a brief discussion with a coworker today who I often talk to about a lot of. Uh, pop culture stuff that is happening. Um, And I don't know. I'm not unhappy with it. I just have a lot of questions, which when it comes to a Wachowski movie can either be a very good thing or a very bad Mm -hmm. thing. Well, I think to, I think to 90% of the population, it's a very bad thing. It's a bad thing because more questions means like people love the first matrix because there weren't many questions. There were quite, there are interests and peaks of interest, but they explained the way those interests, yeah. right? Those 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 what what's going on here? They kind there of there wasn't a it. lot of open. I mean, I've rewatched it recently, so it's like they're still even like just taking the move, first movie by themselves. There are definitely like open questions, but as far as like the plot of the movie and like what's happening yeah. and like, how the at world the end of the works, movie when, very when Neil ha- but when Neil hangs the phone up and then they play Rage Against the Machine, yeah, you don't go. Hmm, I wonder about all this other stuff. Yeah. Right? You don't they're there for you to think about. Mm-hmm. Like they hint at the other P- matrixes well, the, and all I that mean, kind of stuff. First thing is they hint at Zion cuz uh, rewatching yeah. the first movie you don't even you you like you don't see it. Vague is like yeah. it's like vague mentions of Zion but you yeah like you don't yeah, see cause it. Cuz the only people you, you don't see know about are... anybody else that really exists outside of the people from the Nebuchadnezzar like that all exactly. of that is very nebulous yeah. and not, not yeah, you don't you don't they they hint at the idea of a rebellion and how that is shaped you don't know yeah but and everyone leaves that movie being like okay cool we could just end it there and we're happy yeah but then we get two and three and then it becomes okay now we have a lot of questions we got a, we got a lot of questions we got a lot of questions and that's where people get lost a lot of questions where... and not as many answers well i think i actually i disagree and agree I think there's a ton of answers to a lot of questions, but the answers are in the shape of more questions. Yes. Well, I mean, that's part of, it gets the part of a lot of these properties like the matrix and, um, you know, not specifically the sci-fi stuff, but I would say a lot of the things that get to more like philosophical, uh, the writing tends to, a lot of writing in these type of shows or movies tends to lead to answers that just make more questions. Yeah, it's that it's that Philip K. Dick. We're gonna yeah. It's the, it's the cyberpunk stuff, which I completely everyone loves, obviously. But yeah, you know, with the Matrix Four trailer, right, Matrix Resurrection. Yeah, I knew it was coming out the night before, mm-hmm. like the time. Obviously, they told everyone it's coming out Thursday. Yeah. So I texted you that, and I was on YouTube, and I saw they had an event for it. So I had set a reminder. Oh. And I had my alarm set. I didn't see set. that. I didn't see the hand like. A... Yeah, on their YouTube channel, they put it a. a, a an event happening at 8.59 or 58. Okay. So that, that's when it was going to drop. So I had my alarm to wake me up because I work nighttime. Yeah. To wake me up at that time to watch it. So I woke up at 8.45. Okay. With fucking like groggy ass eyes. Excuse me. Bullshitted around for like 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. It dropped immediately. And then I watched it on my phone in bed, barely awake with like crusty shit eyes. 
was like, okay, put it down. I texted you about it for a second, like briefly. Yeah. Fuck, I took a shower, took a dump, went to my living room, watched it on my big TV with actual awake eyes. Yeah. And the feeling that I get, and I tell me if I'm wrong, if this is what you're trying to excri- describe by yourself. Mm-hmm. Maybe we're feeling the same thing, but we, we're just, you don't know the, don't know the feeling that I'm, uh, the right words. Okay. Tell me if I'm wrong about this, but this is how I felt. Okay. I felt walking away from it with a very big sense of a lot of questions, but the sense of sense of it was, why do we have this? Yeah, I know. I think that's definitely the big part of it is, I think that's definitely probably the biggest concern that I have is, you know, especially in our back and forth, you know, we've talked about leading up to this movie and, you know, taking in the, the canon of the original trilogy and how that, story ends um, with Neo dying to, you know, save everybody else. Yeah. There's not an explanation of how he's back. There's not an explanation of how Carrie Ann Moss is back. There's not an explanation of a guy who is apparently Morpheus is back. Yeah. There's no explanation for any of this stuff. And so the biggest question becomes, it's not, I mean, I don't know. I guess the why for me doesn't matter as much because the cynical version part of me goes well because of money, but right. the how is the most important question that I have, which is how the fuck is Neil alive? Yeah, exactly. He definitely you know, and, died. And, you know, and just from rewatching the trailer a bunch of times and seeing some people comment their theories on it, because my initial reaction was okay, it's a program, he's a copy. Yeah. But then also I'm like, okay, maybe he's just like in a coma or like in a stasis and the machines are keeping that him alive. That was my and... thought, especially after watching it a couple of times and scrubbing through it a little bit. And you can see that he's like in the machine world. So I guess the explanation, if you don't want to go with the fact that like he's a program, which could, could be that instead of dying, he somehow got put in a coma. And the only, only way to keep him alive was to put him into the Matrix somehow. So Yeah, but then all you have that and like, okay, so... Are the machines or whoever is keeping him like in, they're giving him blue pills to keep him like locked down? I don't yeah. know enough. And honestly, there's definitely images though, that piss me off. That's the, one of the ones that piss me off because it's a little too on the nose where he's like just physically swallowing blue pills every day. And I'm like, okay, you don't gotta yeah. do this to me. I could get it without him making like giant ass blue pills. Do you get so it? Yeah, do tra- you remember the reference? The, the like, trailer that, is very much like it's very much like that. Like. The blue pill, red pill, take this time to fly. The mirror, like it's all these things. Well, like, and that's the other thing, which is, I think now I've just thought about it and it just like actualized it for me. But it reminds me of a lot of sequels or like soft reboots that we've been having. Which I actually watching this trailer, I feel like it's going to be more of like a soft reboot than it is going to be like a sequ- an actual like. Well, I completely agree. sequel. I, co- I completely agree. But I, and the problem that we've been seeing with a lot of soft reboots and stuff like that in recent years, and it exemplifies that in this trailer, is that it's just a lot of images of stuff that you know. It's like, mm-hmm. you know this, Nostalgia. you know this, Nostalgia. you know this, you know the pills, yeah. you know Morpheus's yeah. glasses, you know that Neo flies, you know agents, blah, 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 but none of it really like... I don't know. I'm in, you know, it's just one trailer, so maybe we're judging it too harshly, but like, it just seems like a lot of like flashes of images of like this is shit that you know so we're going to cram it all in there and yeah hope that everything else just works out well i'll I'll say this is that i i like the trailer a lot i think it's a really well-made trailer it makes me interested Mm -hmm. it piques my interest it makes me ask questions like i'm doing right now yeah but on the same say on the other flip of the coin is that i do know that the trailer is just a bunch of stuff that i recognize yeah that the Wachowski or the editor or whoever cut the, you know, the, the I'm trailer. I'm going to blame the Wachowskis because I'm sure they don't have any part in cutting it. It's whoever edited the thing. But I mean, I, I well, honestly, at the same time, for, these are supposedly shots that are in the movies. So. I, I actually don't. I think for a lot of movies, I wouldn't blame the director. But for this movie, I would blame the director because I feel like if they're going to do a fourth Matrix, they have to be enticed. And the half, that part has to be like cr- creative control, which is what the Matrix is. Yeah. is like creative control to make the movie they want to make. Like. Mm-hmm. There's no way in 99 to do what they wanted to do would have happened if it wasn't them saying, we're going to do it this way. We're going to hire Hong Kong people to make a Hong Kong action movie, but cyberpunk, like that's, that has to be a director's right. you know, decision to do that in the studio, letting them do it. So like, I think that the trailer was Wachowski being like, no, we're going to put these in here. 
I think. Because, like, it's, we're going to pique the interest. And I think that having all the blue pills, two, multiple rabbits, the Atlas book. Yeah. It, it's, it's honestly, like, we're going to show you the black lady at the coffee shop or wherever she's at. Yeah. Which you, you're automatically going to associate with the younger version of an oracle. Because the oracle's a black lady. Well, I was thinking, not of the oracle, but um, I saw somebody point this out. I can't remember exactly where I saw it, but it... it Apparently she she looks very similar to like a grown up version of like the Indian girl from the train station mm-hmm. in the third movie. So mm-hmm. a lot of people were like speculating that as well that like, which I guess she could still be the Oracle because she was with the Oracle and so like, she became yeah. the new Oracle as that girl at the at the train station. But well, there's also the the little girl yeah the, the girl with the sunset at the end of mm-hmm. Revolution. There's is the Asian girl supposed to be the key maker but just gender swap because they're Asian? Like there's too many questions I don't know. Yeah. Like, all I know is that, like, it makes me think that it could be a direct sequel with, with just Neo mm-hmm. in some sort of, you know, upgraded Matrix where memories of people that he knows are, are have been built. But then also, like, are those people, pro- like, are they programmed? Are they actually people? I don't know. Yeah. But then it also makes me think, like, maybe this is a another incarnation of the Matrix particular I don't know because yeah. even with the um, even with the little girl at the end of Revolution, where they she asks the Oracle like, she points to the sun mm-hmm. and though know, the the Matrix becomes normal looking, which was like you know, takes the green away, mm-hmm. whatever, which is why I didn't even realize that until after I was like reading comments, which I which makes sense, but where they she says like, will we see him again? And the Oracle is like, probably or whatever. I always took that as we'll see another. One. Yeah, but Neo is supposed to be the like the major anomaly, right? Like the the other ones naturally form and then they die, but Neo was like supposed to be the the final, I guess, like yeah. the anomaly where he makes everything. Like, there's no way the other ones could do what Neo did because they would just win. Yeah, right. So like Neo and and Smith were like prophecy or something. Yeah. I no. took it as so I don't know I, I really don't know I feel like the Wachowskis kind of wrote themselves into a corner that that they can get out of it but knowing that their track record and I've seen every one of their movies in theaters yeah I, I don't know yeah I don't know and I think you brought up a, a a point too that I didn't really think of before which is like could all of the like zion people could they actually just be programs because i just thought about it and you really don't see anything in the real world outside of like a couple of shots but those are all in the machine world so these could just be programs that are like somehow you know forcing neo to go through some sort of i don't know some sort of journey or something like that to either like what is he what do you you think he's when they say and it could be a complete cut line or edited line of dialogue which most likely is Mm -hmm. But if they're saying Neo's looking for something or waiting, like what if that's actually the case, what do you think? Is it Trinity's like soul or something? Or like what? I don't know. Well, is it a baby? Trinity is also is the it, is it a child? Too, because it feels like it feels like Maybe she's, she's just, pregnant. She has to be a program. Maybe she's pregnant. But she died. Maybe she's pregnant before they died, and when her, her body was there, they took the baby out of her body and put her in the matrix. I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying, like, what else could Neo be looking for? Because Neo gave the deal was like what I destroy Smith and then you'd leave Zion a lot. Yeah, well that right? yeah the deal is yeah because Smith was infesting the Matrix so the deal was Neo destroys Smith and then they spare Zion. But at the same time, previously to that, when Trinity was alive, all he cared about was Trinity. Right. So like, well I guess I mean I mean he was going there to make the deal. Well he was going there to fight the machines before Trinity died. So I mean yeah the whole end journey of him going was to save zion anyway so i guess i don't know maybe once but she I died think it was more so like, to save zion what so i gotta do uh, to save zion so i can save trinity maybe i don't know but then you have like so i have other questions in the trailer alone and just like the black guy the morpheus character yeah. looking guy okay he looks like morpheus in one scene but is he also wearing an agent suit in another scene that's the same well guy? i could think that that could just be like him like i don't know it feels like if that could be like the end of like heist gone wrong or like some operation gone wrong or something like that. And like, that might be like him in disguise doing something like that. I don't know. 
I will I, I will admit he was wearing like an agent suit, but then he was also like running away from the agents and he was doing like the going through doors and doing like flippy dippy bullshit. So I bet that here I, I really don't know the thing anymore, but my From what I've seen like, is like he actually is Morpheus. Like he's not got a guy who looks like Morpheus, like he's Morpheus. Like they recast him. Why though? Well, that's what I've been thinking since. Like why why then why that not out. recast I don't understand why they didn't have Lawrence Fishburne back. Which yeah, goes not, back to the fact that Carrie I think Anne. that maybe they're they're either programs or this is like this is like a reincarnation of like maybe like a neo reincarnation or something like that. And that's maybe that's why in that scene he was like surprised to see Trinity. Cause maybe in this world, yeah. like he hasn't met her yet, but he has like the vague notion that like he knows her and she knows him maybe. Yeah. Um, and then maybe it's also like we... a future where it's like, maybe there's another Morpheus and like reincarnated like that. I don't know. But then why would you, re- why would Neo and Trinity reincarnate as who they were before but Morpheus yeah. is some other fucking dude so that right. doesn't make any sense and then also it's like okay so we've seen nothing about a crew of people other eight other humans who are in the matrix like how are we gonna are we going to see people being allowed to lead the matrix like at the end of the movie where that's the deal or are they are the are the machines double crossing the humans and saying no you can't leave and then we're having to still eat, 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 you know, pull them out like previously. Because why do you have the pills then? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like it might be one of those things where it's like, I don't, I really don't know. I, I don't know. I could, I could see it being one of those things where it's like, especially, I mean, I, I guess I'll talk about this more when we're doing a wrap up episode. But I beat the original content for Persona Five, and it had a very similar thing where it's like. It's basically the alternate reality where everybody's subconscious accepts the fact that they don't have to make choices and they don't have and they don't want to like, you know, live their own lives and they'd rather have everybody else make the decisions for them. So maybe even though the deal was to let everybody decide, maybe subconsciously everybody just decided that they wanted to have an easy life. So we're just kind of back to where we started. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But I mean, even. So even when I was talking to you and through text about it with the um all the special like the abilities that we were seeing yeah. in the trailer. Well, that's the thing that's I don't know. It feels weird and it doesn't feel weird at the same time. Like I don't know. Clearly, Neo's Billy's on uh, like still on a, another level from everybody else, where he like basically explodes at fucking building. Um, yeah. which I didn't like that shot by the way. I think that looked really weird, but yeah. Um. But then there's that one moment where, yeah, I know specifically where there's, like, I can't remember who it was, but, like, one of the chicks is, like, jumping off a brick wall corner or something like that, and she, like, disintegrates the bricks that she's, like, underneath when she jumps, which is, like, I feel it's vaguely reminiscent that they, like, have power output like that when they're, like, doing those kind of, like, you know, bending the rule kind of jumps. Because Neo, when he, like, jumps or flies or anything like that, it doesn't destroy anything. Because he's not, like, he's not actually, like, fighting the rules of the world when he does that. Because, like, when he Superman flies, the world just kind of, like, wobbles around him. And then he shoots off a He just, like, rewrites the code. And then it all just goes back to yeah. where it was before. Like, there's not, like, an explosive yeah. force of power. But, you know, and I was re-watching the jump scene yesterday. Mm-hmm. And when Morpheus does the jump, he cracks the tile in the ceiling. Mm-hmm. Right, but the, to me, it's like, and this is just me bullshitting Matrix rules. Yeah. Could be, I have no idea. From my my understanding, at least from the way I interpreted it, mm-hmm. Morpheus explaining the rules by being that like, we can bend them, but you can you know, break them, right. kind of thing. Was that like, yeah, Morpheus's weight from the height would smash a tile on a roof, mm-hmm. but that Asian lady jumping from a rooftop and like doing a front flip and then landing on brick and smashing the brick completely, then bouncing off the brick. To me, there's just no way that that could be matrixable by not the one. Mm. I could be completely wrong, but you look at Trinity, like, why couldn't Trinity fall off the building then? Like, why yeah. did Neo have to save her? No, that's true. Or even when she jumps through the window in the first movie, she's cut up with glass. Like, then why not just jump over the building and bounce off brick? I, I just... Yeah, I mean, I obviously think... Obviously, I mean, I think the but... biggest thing with, like, the bending versus breaking is that, like... I mean, I think it's most exemplary with 
Neo flying, which is just like gravity rules don't apply to him, but gravity rules still apply to everybody else. So I guess if you were applying the fact that like gravity still applies to everybody else, even though you can bend it, the force of like doing like a hard jump like that off of like, you know, bricks or whatever that are old, the f rule of gravity still applying to that, even though you can bend it would still like be forcing pressure on those bricks and like causing them to break. See, I'm not even worried about the bricks, right? So you're, I think you're focused I'm on the I'm still focused on the bricks because that shit is fucking No, no, but... you're focusing on the, on the actual bricks. I, I, when I say that, is that I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the bones in the body. Because you can't, you can bend the bones of the human so much, right? But you see Morpheus in the chair in the first movie when he's being tortured and beat up. It takes him so long to break handcuffs. Yeah, but then you have other scenes like that where we're like he's doing his fight with Neo and he does his like high dive knee into the ground where he like breaks the floor. But that should break not, his knee if you're going. But that's not that real rules. ground though. That's like a mat. Well, it's a tatami mat, but that's still it's yeah. still hard. But you see him when he's when they're fighting the agent and he sacrifices himself and he's punching through a brick. He has to like summon strength to go through the wall. Right. Of like plaster. This Asian lady's just fucking doing front flips and like doing anime jumps, right? Which makes me think she's not human. She's a program. Mm. Or she's the one. Like it's one of the two. I, I don't know. Because if, she, if she's human, I'd be like, your leg's broken, right? I don't know. Because you watch the, like, the opening scene to Reloaded, like... That's like some agent shit what she just did. To me. To jump off a roof, go downwards with gravity, and then flip and purposely aim and then like bounce off bricks to another building. Because I think what the cut's going to be, I bet she's going to jump down a building or jump to a fire escape and then jump again. Hmm. And I'm thinking like that's... Well, yeah, it's the Matrix, obviously. You I would be ruled. If but... that's the case, I would be more inclined to she being the program than she being the one. Because if she's the one, why didn't she just fly like Neo does? Because Neo just she flies. Needs Neo, anyway. She needs Neo to train her. And Neo didn't need anybody to train him to be the one, though. He just did it. Well, he, he well Neo had to die. Well, yeah. And and then then he just realized. I mean, he kind she of realized really... it before in the fight with Smith. He just didn't. He was still, like, breaking the rules. He just didn't realize how far he could break them until he died. Yeah, well... And Trinity kissed him because he had the his true love yeah. or whatever given him. He had the anime power of love uh, guiding the front Of Nakama. Yeah. I, uh... Yeah, I don't know what to think, dude. I, I walk away with it being, like, I liked everything. I liked I, a lot I of am, it, but... I, I, I liked a lot of it, but... I don't know. I mean... I still feel like, why are we doing this? Yeah, I definitely have that, and I just also feel like, I don't know, I don't want to judge it too harshly until I actually feel the movie, actually watch the movie, because sure. The Matrix, for sure, is like one of those things where, like, I don't know, I feel like the whole context isn't there until we watch the movie. Like, we can watch no, the trailers not. as much as we want, but the answers we got no, an are the answers we got at this point, so. Well, my, my, my biggest issue is that, I mean... Even even my story from last week where I saw um, Shang Chi, mm -hmm. where that and that weird guy who with no friends was at, t telling me about how <laughs> revolution sucked. I don't think the majority of the audience was happy with the way those movies went. Yeah. I think people who liked the Matrix liked the way the movies went, but like a lot of people were really burned by the way that two and three happened. So like if they yeah. don't co course correct, I mean the movie's gonna be a shit. Three shit movies is what it's going to be, to people's opinion. I don't think so, but obviously other people. Yeah. Like, I'm fully aware that when I show my fiancé the movies in the next two months, I'm fully aware she's not going to give a shit about Reloaded and Revolution. Mm -hmm. I don't think she will. Right? I do not think she'll watch the end fight scene with Smith and think that it's cool. I think, even though she loves Marvel movies. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't think that it's going to look dated. It's going to look... The fucking courtyard fight when Neo grabs the pole. That's probably the most dated fight. It looks so bad. Well, that's because it's know? just filled with CGI Smiths and CGI Neo, but then, and it just doesn't but then look she can, as good. Yeah, but then she can. I hope that she can appreciate like all the fights in the first movie where, because she likes Shang Chi a lot. Well, it looks it's the same fucking thing. Yeah, like he you has know, great martial arts scenes. So I don't, I don't. I really don't know. I mean, obviously I'll be there day one. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's not. It's not even a question. Mm -hmm. Um. But I also still feel trepidatious about whether or not. I can't go into it being like, I'm excited. I got excited watching the trailer. Yeah. But I also got way more excited watching 
the Brian Danielson return to AEW. <laughs> you know? So, but that's just me, though. I mean, like, I oh, love Oh, you were the telling me about title. the trailers that you watched. I didn't get to watch the Batman trailer. They didn't play oh, it for really? mine for Shang-Chi. Oh. They played... First of all, it was like 20 fucking minutes trailers, which is like the longest I remember in a long time. Or, or Marvel movies just have longer trailers. I don't remember. I'm trying to remember what all they played now. Well, they played Dune, which I was happy with. I didn't get Dune. Uh, they played Dune. They played... Fuck, dude. Now I can't remember like anything. What the fuck else did they even play? All I remember is Dune. Oh, they played No Time Batman. to Die. We uh, didn't have that. Um, Did we? I don't remember. I can't remember. It's like 20 minutes of trailers. Why can't I fucking remember any of them? Well, Zach, real quick. Let's just... um, Anything else you want to say about Matrix 4 trailer? (sighs) No, I don't want to say anything else. Because I feel like if I go any further, I'm just going to start, like, trying to bash it. And I don't want to bash it. Because, you know, it's the first trailer. And I liked a lot of stuff that I saw. I just damn... I think my, my hype complaint. was built up too high for movies before that now I'm just like cautiously like, you know what? See see what happens when it comes out. Well, I have a uh, massive um, bar for this movie. Mm-hmm. And it's not because it's 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 been built for years. I have a standard set that each time I got a Matrix movie, it's been not met the bar. Because mm-hmm. the first movie is like fucking well the first movie is the bar well the first movie to me is a perfect movie yeah in my mind there are only like i can only name like 10 in my opinion perfect movies or 10 or 20 or whatever the fuck small amount of movies that i watch per year Mm -hmm. right and this is what this is a perfect movie and then reloaded's like oh man we're not even 50 percent and revolution's like man we're at 10 percent and i love those movies i'll watch the movies more than anything yeah, but still, and so I have, I have a high standard for this movie. But my two biggest complaints, and I'll, I'll they're quick complaints, and they're they're cosmetic probably. Okay. Right? So they're not a big deal. They're not story breakers. Um, one, I understand that Keanu does not like having a shaved face because he hates his neck. Okay. First of all, I had this argument with my with the coworker I was telling you about today, which is, I don't like that he just looks like John Wick. I don't like it. I don't like it. And I was talking, I was like, I just want to see short haired Neo. Cause that was fucking golden age counter Reeves, dude. That fucking short hair. He looks so good with that. Yeah. But I mean, Neo, it, like, poster. it makes sense for that character. It doesn't make any sense for Neo to look like John wick. And he's like, Oh, maybe he's going yeah. over. And I was like, okay, yeah, maybe he's going over, but that doesn't mean he has to look exactly like John wick. And I get it. Like maybe he doesn't want to, he's at this point where he's like, I don't want to cut my hair. And I didn't know the thing about the neck, but like that makes sense. Like I know, he doesn't want I'm to just it. guessing because like if you look look at Bill and Ted, you're like, he looked weird. <laughs> he looks well. His like, it's his just all his the movies neck. nowadays just look like John Wick. Well, it's because you know I think if he cuts his hair, he can won't grow back. Yeah, maybe. But then two, I think the beard and the neck thing is, I, is uh, my opinion, obviously. Right. Older guy, saggy skin. I don't know. But like I'm looking at the trailer or the poster for the first movie. I'm like, dude, just you look like a hacker. Yeah. With the, with the slick back hair, you look like John Wick. And yeah, I he doesn't look like that. a hacker in this movie. I don't need. And also, you to that be scene John where Wick. he's like staring at everybody else is looking at their cell phones. He's supposed to be like a guy that's like on the cutting. Like he's a hacker. He's like supposed to be on like the cutting edge of technology, and he's staring at everybody else, maybe, looking at their cell phones. Like he's like movie. never. He's like, what are smartphones? Like what are these? Well, maybe he's not. Maybe he's not a hacker in this movie. He's Thomas Anderson. If he doesn't at and, least touch and, a keyboard, then what the fuck are we doing? You know, he has to find a book to follow the rabbit. Also, that yeah, girl's white rabbit tattoo looked fucking awful. Trinity's was yeah. great because it was small and it was, it got to the point. That's like she's got yeah. some giant fucking ass white rabbit tattoo. I'm like, it's what it's like the blue pill shit. Like it's too much, too much, too on the um, nose. Or not was Trin's. It? No, it is. It's not Trinity's tattoo. No, it's some random lady. No, yeah, it's some random lady. Never mind. Some random lady. No, my other big complaint, speaking of the, the, tri- of the no, tattoo No, Trin had one club. too, didn't he? Because that's who she... That's who we knew who to... I he think had that something was, that made him I think, no, I think that her. he was just following her and then she walked up to him. I think she had something that made him talk to her. I think he was just standing against the wall and he saw it and then he... 
No, it's because the girl at the... No, the rabbit tattoo is the girl at the fucking door. No, yeah, I know okay? that. I know it's that yeah. one because it, she's the one that makes him leave, but... I thought Trinity had one, too. I guess not. I think she's walked, she's walked up to him in the club. But speaking of that... Uh, the, I understand the use of the song for the trailer. I hated I the it. song. I hated it. Well, I get it. It's on the nose again. Well, the, and that's it. And that's part of the reason why I hated it. Because once again, it's like, okay, I get it. Like Alice in Wonderland. Pills. Yes, it's like a thing that was in the first movie. But what they really should have done was like, you know, opening scene of that like San Francisco looking thing. And then fucking bone in the back of my Dragula. And then fucking Neo just walking and talking to the MPH. That would have been fucking sick. I also had a problem, now that I'm thinking, now you brought that up, I did have a problem where, I think I talked to this about you in text, or at least talked about it with somebody, but it was like, it looks, if this is like, if, if, if like the scenes with MPH and stuff is like him in the Matrix, it looks too nice. Yeah. Like, it doesn't look like, I mean, I guess it might be part of the thing where like, this is a new Matrix, but like, it doesn't look like, it doesn't look like the Matrix. <laughs> well, the thing is that because again, that girl removes the green at the end of the last movie, so maybe that's what it is. But so also, I di- I didn't see the footage because I didn't scrub through it like frame by frame like some people did. Mm-hmm. But I saw I kept seeing comments that in the trailer, there's a scene or a, a bit where people are watching the Matrix. Oh, I didn't see that shit at all. I didn't. I didn't scrub through it, so I can't say for like on their for phones sure about... and shit. Because that's the only time I saw somebody like. I, I don't. Something. I guess I don't know, but apparently I was watching the Mega sixty four react, and they were going frame by frame, and they they were like, Rocco was like, "Are they watching the Matrix in this?" And they're like, "Yeah, they're watching the Matrix." That's a little like, too oh, I much. Also. I, need, I need to look at it. I don't know what time code. I don't know where it's at. But apparently, hold on. Apparently, that's in the trailer. I didn't, I didn't know that it. they'd done like a breakdown of it. Well, theirs is just like not like that. They're, they're, they're reacting to it on on a podcast. Oh, is it on their latest? But, I'm, I guess it had to have been their latest. It's on their it's on their archi- archive channel. It's Rocco's podcast. Oh, okay. I didn't. But it's um, on podcast. Yeah, it's a stream. Um, but other than that, man, I have no other thoughts, really. Um, so if you want to, yeah, we can go I'll on to the it, next thing. I'll leave it to you. Do you want to hit some trailers from PS PlayStation? And then next week, double up Quantum and Casino, or do you want to do Casino? Yeah, you know what? Let's do it while it's fresh in our mind. Let's hit some of these PlayStation trailers. Sure. We can we can double up next week. Because trust me, I don't have a lot to say about Quantum of Solace. <laughs> no, I don't remember having a whole lot to say either. That movie's kind of like... I remember it's, a conti- I- it's basically a continuation of... The organization story from the first movie, and then I don't remember. It was like some environment. All I remember is that it somehow turned into like an environmentalist thing. All I remember about Quantum. I mean, I've seen Quantum a lot for some reason. Yeah. But it's like okay, end scene in the middle of a desert in a building. Yeah, I remember that. Makes no makes no sense. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Mm. God of War. Let's do that. God of War, dude. First of all, okay. I know I've beat. Have you beaten the the God of War? Yes. Okay. I couldn't remember if you'd beaten it or not. I know you took it. me a lot. Took me a took me a long yeah, time. Yeah, it took me. It took me a couple weeks. It took me like three weeks or so to beat it. Just because no, I, mean, I wasn't it took like me two I think years. I was only playing on like my off days, but. No, it took me two years. Oh damn! It didn't take me that long. <laughs> it because took me I, like, I played. It took me like two years to start playing it. So. No, I bought it when it came out. I, I think I played like 60% of it, and then I sold my PlayStation. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't finish it until I bought another PlayStation. Mm-hmm. So that, that's what I was at. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Um, Yeah, dude. I mean, okay. So you got the kid's back. He's not older than I thought he would be. I thought he would still be like a lot older. So I guess this isn't like I – guess, I guess he doesn't have to be that much older because it doesn't look like this takes place too far after where we left off in the first game. Yeah. Um, first of all, it's fucking sick that you just start off with the Chaos Blades this time. I was like, hell yeah, we don't have to do no f- another deep dive into his memories to finally pull out like some of the best weapons to ever be in a PlayStation game. Yeah, I um, I, I think we should get this out of the way first. Okay. 
Because there's some drama going on with the trailer. Right what? Now. Drama. Oh. Some base, some small drama I'm seeing on the on the corners of the of the stupid internet. Oh my god, I didn't see any drama. Okay, Lay it on the, me. the the little black girl. Oh, there's drama about that. I think people are reacting like, why is there a black girl? I I don't know because she's there. There's I a was black thinking woman. like, I was like thinking like, why the why the fuck does it matter? Yeah, like there's a black woman. Why what does it matter? If it now if it was like, hey. We're in fucking Japan. Yeah. And, like, it's a Japanese... Like, what are you talking about? It's fine. You know, whatever. Yeah. So that that's what people are complaining about that, apparently. A small portion of people are complaining about that. Which uh, is, that's really stupid to me. First of all, idea. it doesn't really matter to me. I The only thing that bothered me is that she looked like Zendaya. And I was like, God damn it, is Zendaya <laughs> going to be in another fucking thing? I'm cool with that. Um... I think the trailer is really cool. I was really excited to watch it when it came out. When it popped up, I was really excited to just to kind of see what they're doing. Mm-hmm. I um, I'm assuming the boy is the same voice actor, just uh, just older. I think so. Yeah. Because I mean, because obviously Kratos is still Teal. Dude, I love that it's Teal. His voice yeah. is so good. Christopher Judge, I think yeah. is the name. But I uh, love love the love their like dynamic still. I don't really. The visuals look great, obviously, mm-hmm. but but to be completely honest, though. I was watching this trailer being like, I'm not that impressed by the graphics. No, I think maybe it's it just looks that, great. like my, it doesn't look that much like of a step up from the, yeah. the whatever, 2018 God of War or whatever. Not the first God of War, but you know. Yeah, God of War. Um, but yeah, God, it doesn't look like, because especially from like jumping to like, unless this is a game that like, I don't know if they said this or not, I can't remember, but like, if this isn't like a PS5 only game, and it's also like PS4, PS5, then maybe well, the, that the, explains why it hasn't advanced so much. The, but the opening says PS5, so I'm like, that's rough. Yeah, the, the, the little yeah, bottom part. I mean, it, says it, like, it definitely, if it's a PS5 exclusive and it still looks like that, it doesn't look. It doesn't look like they took full advantage of the hardware, for sure. Yeah, I mean, don't be wrong. Again, it looks awesome. Especially with, like some awesome. of the other games that were shown off in the showcase that were like. I mean, dude. If don't get me wrong again, it looks amazing. Yeah, it looks awesome, right? It looked the, the, the gameplay looks, looks awesome. fantastic, and it looks so much fun. Yeah. And I'm good. I know I'm gonna I enjoy mean, playing it again. Game design, visual design, it looks great. Yeah, right. But holy shit, fucking Horizon Zero Dawn, the new one, mm-hmm. dude. I don't know if there's a trailer for the PS whatever, but I saw the trailer, a gameplay trailer from like a few months ago. Mm-hmm. That shit looks insane. Yeah, it looks really good. Like, visually, it just looks... The water, the fucking grass... It looks fucking insane. And I, don't, I didn't give a fuck about the first one. Yeah. But the way that this new one looked, I was like, so, like, I'm buying that just for fucking the way it looks. Yeah. You know? And people love the first one, so I assume that the yeah, basics like the of the game are going to be... I didn't beat it. I think I got... I don't know how far I got. I know I got at least, like, 50% through it or something like... Well, I'm like, no, people love the first one. And the DLC and stuff, and so I can't imagine they're going to change too much. So I, we know the gameplay is going to be fine, and then it's coupled with this insane-looking graphics. Oh yeah, yeah I'm, all, I'm all, all, all bored. The only problem is that I can't find a fucking PlayStation. Yeah, I mean that's, I mean that's the most heartbreaking thing about watching this entire showcase is like, oh yeah, this all looks great, but like I still haven't got an opportunity to get my hands on a PlayStation. So I I, I haven't looked yet because I don't I don't watch. Uh, I haven't chat. looked in a couple of months since I got my Switch. I hadn't been trying to look as hard. Um, oh no, I was gonna say that I um, I was gonna say that I do, I don't watch chat in these live streams. Oh, but I really hope that the chat was reacting the same way that the chat does when I watch my Hasbro toy streams, which is just the comments being like. You guys suck at production. Where's the GI Joes? Where's the GI Joes? Where's the GI Joes? Where's the GI Joes? Like all, like they go to all these posts from Hasbro and just harass them by being like, "Oh, great, there's no no GI Joes." Or like NECA, they'll be like, "You'll go NECA's post and put, oh, great, Target exclusive, aka eBay exclusive." <laughs> so it's like with with Sony, like, no, I mean, they know. I get that, but at the same time, I don't know. I it, it's hard to rag on them too hard because it's not like it's not only them, like. It's this chip shortage that is making, like, supplies for everything. Like, I mean, it's affecting, sure. like, cars and stuff, too. So it's, like, it's hard to, like, completely rag on them for, like, hey, you don't got enough supply out. But it is kind of, like, weird. Why show, why like, have a the supply is not out there, but yet they're still pushing ahead, like, everything's A-OK. And, like, everybody's got their PS5s. And I'm, like, no, yeah. like, the majority of people 
do not have their hands on this console yet. Why well, have a showcase for games that aren't even really going to come out for another two, three years? Well, you always have. I don't care. For, I mean, you always have roadmaps. For, I mean, yeah, yeah. And every year, I think it's stupid, and I can I can find the console. So now, if I can't find the console, and you're telling me, "Hey, get excited for this game," I'm like, "Bitch." I'm more excited to find a fucking PS5 than I am to fucking play. Well, hopefully play, in a year you'll be able to you know, we'll be able to find PS5s. I, I, to me, it's crazy that it's been two years. Has it been two years? I thought it had only been a year. Has it been it's two years over, since the PS5 yeah, came out? It's been at least a year and a half, for sure. At this point, a year and a half, for sure. Year and a half. I'm, I, I feel like I'm closer to, to fucking two years now, almost. Is it? I thought it came out in 2020. Let's see. Uh, release date. November 2020. Okay, yeah, so it's been about almost a year. And the Xbox was before that. Xbox was like... X was, it was only like a month before that. I Let's think. see when the Xbox came out. November 10th. Yeah, so... So I'm thinking like, dude, we're sitting It's still here. crazy that it's been a year and we still have this supply chain issue, though. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. I, I, like, it's hard for me to give a shit about Wolverine mm-hmm. when I can't even find a fucking... Yeah, when I can't Xbox. even find anything to like play it on. To play it on, yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm looking here like, okay, I'll go play Metal Slug on the PC when it comes out. That's I'm more excited for that. Yeah. You know. I'm excited to play a fucking Shredder's Revenge on Steam than I am. Get playing. that uncharted PC remastered. That's a thing? Yeah, you didn't see that? They're doing the what was it? The I think it was whatever. just Thieves End and and the 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 standalone spinoff, whatever the whatever the hell that game was called. Um, but but I think yeah, they're like a, it's like a bundle that is being released for. I didn't even play that game. I liked Uncharted Four. You didn't play Uncharted Four. Mm-hmm. I bought it, played it for about two seconds, put it away. What was the last one you played? Three. I played yeah, I played one, two, and three. Yeah. Oh, I loved them. They were great. I just didn't put time into four. I just wasn't really interested. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure I'd like it, but it's the same way I feel about Indiana Jones, which is that like. In theory, I'm a humongous fan, and I like them a lot. Right. But then when it's time that people are like, hey, you want to watch Raiders of the Lost Ark? I'm like, yeah, I mean... It's Raiders. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is Raiders. But also, it's not a movie that I'm like... It's never been a movie for me where I'm like, yeah, I'll watch it so much. You're right. You should That should be Temple of Doom for you, because then you get to watch that lady eat monkey brains, and that's that's good shit. I don't even like Temple. What? I don't like, I like Temple. Temple. I, I think Temple's a great movie. I used but to I don't... not like Temple a lot when I was a kid, but now that I'm older, Temple has like grown to be like one of my favorites. I like Temple a lot. I mean, because it's the super dark shit. Yeah, I mean, of the four movies, yeah, it's definitely. Well, look, I think my my favorite's movies. Raiders. All right, but... there's only three in Indiana Jones. No, there's four. There's there's, there's four. three. There's four. Then there will be five. No, It'll be worse. no, there's definitely not five. I don't care what the hell they say. Harrison Ford looks like he's about to die as soon as he walks. There's no way there's going to be a five. Yeah. No, honestly, like, I think what it was is that when I was a kid, I my dad would watch Indy, mm-hmm. and I was like, okay, whatever. And then he took me to see The Mummy, and I was like, this is, this is way The better. Mummy is just Indiana Jones, but like... You it's, fucking it's do the spinal no. tap shit and you like crank this shit up to eleven. The difference is that, look, I, I'll go. I will fall on the fucking sword on this. Look, I love the. I, first of all, you don't gotta fall on the sword for nothing. I love the mummy. You no, know that's not what I'm saying. I like. That's the mummy. not what I'm saying. I'm saying this in that genre, in that style oh, wait, hold of on. movie. No, don't say what you're gonna say. Okay, go ahead. Don't say what it. Say. Don't say that the mummy is better than Indiana Jones. I mean, yeah. I absolutely 100% agree because it comes down to this if you said Jason if you had to pick someone's filmography to watch for the rest of your life you can watch all other movies but when it comes to these two actors you can only watch one or the other I will say this I'll put it this way in the last year I have watched seven Brendan movies I have watched Goose Egg Harrison movies because beyond the fucking six movies we like about Harrison, what else do you give a fuck about? The what? Star Wars and Indiana Jones? Other than yeah, that? besides those, what else do you care about? Air Force One? Fuck off. I like Air Force One. 
It's fine, Get off but it's my also plate. a fucking forgettable movie. Was it Clear and Present Danger? Is that the other one he was in? Oh, boring. Whatever. Yeah, Clear and Present Danger is a Tom, Tom Clancy. Yeah, Patriot Games. Hold on. Fucking one Let me look up Harrison Ford's my filmography wife. right quick. Let it's not good. Ones. Let me. It's not that me, good. Let me check. Pull it up. Give me a check. Hold on. Read it okay. off. Hold on. Okay, filmography, actor. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's just go back to start from the beginning. Oh, you got Blade Runner? 60s. Yep. Don't care. Uh, let's see. I'll pass on it. Hold on. I, went, I think I went a little too far. Okay, Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Pass on it. He was in Apocalypse Now? What the fuck? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember yeah, that. Yeah. Pass on it. Don't care. Uh, Frisco Kid. I don't remember that. Never, never seen that. Episode five, Indiana Jones one, mm-hmm. Blade Runner, mm-hmm. more Star Wars, more Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. Oh, you get the Fugitive? Hell yeah! Let's go. Pass on it. That's Patriot fine. Games. Pass on it. Pass on it. Let's see. Clear and Present Danger. Yeah. Air Force One. Yeah. Uh. Oh shit! He was in like What Lies Beneath. I remember yeah, my mom was. while loving that movie. He was, yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, God. Okay, yeah, he's got some stinkers on here. Okay, so pause. Well, look, Brendan... Ben, it's not like Brendan Fraser hasn't been in some stinkers. Uh, I'm, I'll, okay, here we go. Let's look. I'm not saying lack of stinkies. Okay. I'm saying quality of filmography that I would want to rewatch. Six, only six of those movies you named, maybe seven with, you no know, with the one-armed man. Do I really would want to rewatch of Harrison? That's just the facts. Six movies, maybe seven, if I give you one. Well, John Mulaney over... is the only reason I want to keep rewatching The Fugitive over and over again. But right, <laughs> if, I, if I go over to Brendan, I got Encino Man, ten out of ten movie. School Ties, ten out of ten movie. Right, you keep moving on. Move a little for Airheads. I watched that movie three times this year alone. You go a little farther. Right, you get uh, uh, what's it called? What's what's the fucking one? George of the Jungle. George of the Jungle's there. It's a great movie. And you move Blast from the Past. Fantastic movie. Great rom com. Blast from the Past. The Mummy. Duh. 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 duh right. Duh, 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 duh. Also. Boom. Also. Bedazzled, the Mummy great Two. Ba 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 ba. Right. Bedazzled. Great. Monkey Bone. Great. Bedazzled. Is that the one with the devil? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which I loved. Mummy Returns. Great, obviously. Now the two thousands, it's hit it's or a miss. a rougher time for Brendan Fraser. It's hit or miss. Looney Tunes back in action. People didn't like it, eh, right? It's kind of a miss. I was cool with it. All right, right. You got Crash. Boom. Great. Crash the Damon Cronenberg Crash. Well, I think it's isn't it? Um, I think it says Paul Haggis. Oh, is it? Uh, Journey Center of the Earth, boom, Inkheart, loved Inkheart, that was really great. And then that's kind of where his filmography ends until his resurgence, which is the recent. Mm. Which is, I gotta pay back my wife movies. Yeah. These are, these are the Nicolas Cage, <laughs> I spent too much money movies. You know. Fair enough. But then you come back in from, you know, with the, with the Brendan Fraser res- renaissance. Mm-hmm. And you got fucking... But you get Doom no Patrol, move. obviously. Yeah, you get Doom Patrol, No Sudden Move, this whale movie's coming out, Killers of the Flower Moon's coming out. Oh, I forgot that he was offered a part in that. Yeah, and then this, you got this Brothers movie coming out. Brothers so it's movie? Like, if you're telling me that... I don't... Is this... Is this just twins? Which one are we talking about? Brothers? Brothers. I don't know it's, what a, that it's is. a movie that sounds basically like twins. It's Josh Brolin and Peter, Peter Dinklage, hmm. and it's about it's basically twins. Plot almost. kept That's under wraps, according to IMDb. It says the film is said to be totally in the vein of Twins by Ivan Reitman. So basically, it's it's twins. Huh. So my point my point being this: of the filmography, if you just give me, you give me Star Wars, you give me Indy. So six movies. I pick six Brendan movies, Encino Man. I pick Airheads, and then I pick the two Mummy movies. And I pick George, <gasps> and then um, I forgot he was in GI Joe. I'm like yeah, a small bit part, but still, 
It's it's not even a question. It's not even a question. Indiana Jones versus fucking Rick. What's his last name again? Rick O'Connor. O'Malley. O'Connor. You call yourself O'Connor. a mummy fan. Well, because I keep thinking of Brian from Fast. Rick Brian. He's like, his it was like Brian O'Connell. O'Connor. Oh, I don't know. Rick O'Connell. Brian O'Connor. I can't remember. Now, if you want to talk about fucking bullshit filmography, <laughs> that I'll pick any day. I'll pick Paul Walker's filmography over <laughs> over a lot of people's. Just for Fast and Furious. And for She's All That. Was he in that? Yeah, bro. He was in a parkour movie before he died, right, too? What was that movie called? Par- I don't know. It was like D23 or something like that? He was in Tammy and the T-Rex. No fucking way. He was? He's the, He plays the boyfriend. He's the T-Rex. Wait, he played the T-Rex? <laughs> yeah, he was the boyfriend. I don't remember that from the RLM episode. Yeah, Google it. Shit. Pull it up. Pull up on what Shit, team. dude. Hold on. I'm trying to pull up his IMDb. Let me pull up his IMDb real quick. God damn, that was too... Th- it's been almost 10 years? Fuck. Tammy the T-Rex, baby. 10 years since he died. That's fucking insane. Who's the boss? I always forgot that. I wish for that Denise Richards was like... Like super duper attractive back in the day. Tammy the T-Rex. I can't believe it. What was the movie... I also always forget that she's Brick in... Mansions, that's what it was called. Oh, yeah, yeah. I also forget that she's in... She's the main fucking lady in Starship Troopers. Who, Tammy and the T-Rex? Denise Richards, yeah. I yeah, she plays the the pirate, the airhead pilot. Yeah. Who's like the she's worst the girl... girl to ever exist on the face of the planet. <laughs> no, so... She, she's all that is... She's all that's I, I mean, Amanda like... Bynes, right? Where she, like, is a man or whatever? What's that one uh, called? That's, um... She's the man. Oh. She's all that is... Bro, if you haven't seen it, Zach, you work tomorrow, right? Yeah. You gotta watch it before bed. <laughs> quick, quick... It's a quick 90s... Okay, Are I'm they coming out, out with, like, you. a he's all that? It's already out, baby. Oh, really? So, my... Who my uh, I follow... It's TikTokers. Yeah, it was somebody... Yeah. It was, a, it was TikTokers, and then there was somebody famous. So, um... My my fiance has never never saw it, so I was like, we're gonna watch it because it's it's a movie I think you enjoy. It's like a n- late '90s, ni- 1999, mm-hmm. teen rom com comedy kind of movie, and it's the quintessential movie that everyone pulls makes fun of, or no teen movie makes fun of. What's it called? Another teen movie? Not another teen and or rom- teen, another teen movie. Is that what is it is? Okay, spoof. Yeah, so it's Freddie Prince. Not character. another teen movie. No, that's Chris. That's Chris Evans, right? Evans too, where he like puts a cake on his dick or whatever. I don't know. I don't think he's, is he in that movie. I don't think so. Maybe that was just Chris Evans. I'm pretty sure it's Chris Evans. But she's all that. Paul Walker. Main character is Freddie Prince Jr. as the football player goofball guy. Paul Walker is his douchey best friend, and then their black token friend is Gus. What? Gus? Yeah, a young, a young Burton Guster. A young Buttersnaps McGee? Yeah. And then the goal, the whole idea is like, okay, the bet is you have to bring any girl to prom and make her the prom queen. So they find the artistic girl, and then he starts, pretty f- Prince starts talking to her, and they, oh, I'm a, it's a bet, but I actually kind of like you, and we actually get along really well, and you're really pretty, but you take your glasses off, and you're like, oh my god, you're so pretty. It's an awesome 90s movie. So this is the, this movie exists in a world where people are ugly if they have glasses on, but if you take glasses off, they're really hot. Pretty much. Okay. It's it's the parody of why like in nine other teen movie, where the um care the girl like is doing the makeover. Yeah. And she's looking at the girl with the glasses, and she's already attractive, and all she does is take her glasses off and goes, ah, oh, there you go, uh. and like it's so fucking funny. No, it's a, it's a fantastic movie, and also um. Scoob's in it. Not Scooby. Shaggy's in it. Mm. Uh, what's his name? What's his name? I can't remember Packers. his name, but he was in... I mean, he was in that. He was in Scooby-Doo, man. Scream. Um, Scream, yeah. Scream. That was on... Will, not Willard. That last name. Not Willard. What's his name? I don't know, because he was in Twin Peaks, too. What the fuck, what the fuck was his SLC. I can... SLC Punk. Fucking Scream. Scooby. She's all that. Do. Um, Hackers. I want to say his name is like... Walt Bosch. Something, but that's not right. No, it's not Walton. It's like Chris, maybe? 
No, it's what's not his close. name? Matthew Lillard. That's his name. Matthew. So I was right with the Willard kind of thing. Willard, yeah, Willard. Lillard. Yeah, it's close. Yeah, close enough. It's a great movie, Zach. You you would dig it. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's a, a quick ninety minute fun watch. I'm always down for a quick movie. You know what I'm saying? It's a quick '90s nostalgia watch. Um, but back to my point. Real quick, what was our end point? Podcast, I guess. My point was this: Indiana Jones is not as good as the Mummy. And right, that was point your that point. I, the fact that my, my 4K collection, I don't have the indie 4K set. One point. Well, first off, it's overpriced. Two, it looks like shit. It's probably like the it's probably like the Lord of the Rings one where it's like the 4K set is like 80 bucks for that, which is. It's overpriced. It's steel books, and it comes in a really shitty outer case. Mm. But two, they're just not as good as I would. I will take the two mummy movies over all fucking four indie movies any day of the week. Mm. Are any of the of the indie girls even as good as fucking what's her name? I can't even remember her name. She's in Black Widow, whatever the fuck. Okay, Rachel Weiss. Yeah, Rachel Weiss. I don't Weiss. know her fucking character's name. Uh, if I Marian, don't like Marian at all. If Marion was in all of them, I'd be fine. Marion's the best Because she's great. Sure. But she's not in Temple. Well, Crusaders is the the girl's a Nazi, so that kind of takes it down also. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, the, the, the Temple girl is the worst part of that whole thing. The worst one. She's the worst one. She's the worst one. Now, if you told me, Jason, you have to pick Kurt Russell's filmography or Jeff Bridges' filmography. I feel like I'd pick Kurt's. I would have a really hard time picking only because I love Big Lebowski. Well, Big Lebowski is a big one. But I would definitely lean. I would probably pick. But Kurt I feel like obviously Escape. Kurt's is like, I mean, first of all, just with Kurt, you've got Big Trouble and you've got Escape from New York. I mean, yes, but I think also too, there's just the the. You also get all the Fast and Furious movies that he was in. <laughs> I don't care about those. But it's the, it's his variety of movie. He has so much variety. He's comedy. He's got a lot more. Times. Yeah, he's definitely got a lot more variety yeah. than Jeff Bridges' stuff. Yeah. Now, if you told me like, hey, you, you have to pick Keanu's filmography, who's an equivalent person to Keanu? Like, kind of bad actor. Probably like Nicolas Cage. Oof! You can't do that. You can't come. Yeah, you kind of can. You kind of can. Okay. All right. Well, first off, what's an Oscar like was not? Bruce Willis, but I feel like I would just pick Keanu over Bruce Willis. Okay, Keanu filmography or Nick, who do you pick? That's hard. That's actually really hard. It's easy for me. I feel like I would lean... I feel like I would still lean towards Keanu, though. Really? I think so. I think because I haven't, like, I know yeah. Nick Cage has a lot of good movies, but when I think about his filmography, I haven't seen a lot of his good ones. Like, I still have, like, on my list, like, I still haven't watched, like, Raising in Arizona. I still want to oh. watch Wild at Heart. So good. I want to watch, like, you know, a lot of his, like, classic bangers I, like, haven't really seen as much. I mean, I've seen, like, look. It's hard for me because then I also want to always watch him steal the Declaration of Independence all the damn time. Which now, if we're going, if we really were going to do it, we should have did Indiana Jones versus, versus Nicolas Mummy Cage. versus Nicolas Cage. Um, no, to me it's easy, Nicolas Cage because Ra- Raising Arizona is fantastic. Obviously, yeah, all his '80s stuff when he's like a young buck, yeah, fantastic. His early '90s stuff, fantastic. And you get to where he's an adult man. Like Snake Eyes, Con Air, The Rock. It's not even a question. Sorry. Okay, so John Wick is great. I love The Matrix. It's a perfect movie, like I said. Yeah. But Gone in 60 Seconds I is just so thought, f- I thought fucking fun. The Matrix and Bill and Ted would push Keanu over for you, but... I think what it is that I love those movies so very much, and they're some of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah. But when I go... If I'm picking based on... Like qual- quantity mm-hmm. of quality, the Matrix is perfect, right? Right. Bill and Ted's is fantastic, mm-hmm. but the fact that I can turn on Nicolas Cage filmography and get like a and don't get me wrong, I ha- I love Speed, I love Point Break. They're all, they're amazing. You get John Wick too. John Wick, Ma- John Wick, Matrix, Point Break, Speed, Bill and Ted. That's that's an amazing five. That's a great basketball team right there, right? Of Keanu movies, but I get. Fucking like 
Raising Arizona, The Rock. Face Off. National. Yeah. I like Face Off a lot. Gone in 60 Seconds. Yeah, Gone in 60 Seconds. Con Air. And then you can fill in. And you have a flex spot for whatever crazy movie you want. We'll put Mandy in there. I was going to say, you put Mandy, you put Pig. But if I was going just pure young Nick, you know, there's just so many options for for his movies that I would have to pick him all day. But Snake Eyes would probably be in there. I love Snake Eyes so much. Snake Eyes is good, yeah. Um, so I would pick him. I'd pick him for sure. But also we could put Jiu-Jitsu. Jiu-Jitsu can go in there, and we'll just pick that and watch that every day. I so. would rather kill myself <laughs> than watch that movie every day. Yeah, I, I completely agree. You know, look, well, Zach, look, we all know that the oh, real flex spot is for Wicker Man. That's what the real flex spot is for. I want to see him punching people in the face. Not the bees! I want to see him punching people in the face. I want to see him punch an old lady in the face and wear a bear costume. But you should really watch Bringing Out the Dead. The what? Bringing Out the Dead. Bringing Out the Dead. Nick Cage movie. I don't think I've ever heard of that. I, I mentioned it a long time ago on the podcast because I watched it for the first time in a long time. Um, but it's a weird movie. Okay. Because look at who's starring it. Look who's directing it. Well, I see Martin Scorsese. I see Nicolas Cage. I see Fucking Patricia. Weird. I see Ving Rhames. That's a big one. Tom Sizemore. Oh my god. It's a John Goodman. Great. Oh my god. It's a really good like dark movie. Good lord. All right. It's about a paramedic. I'm surprised it's a Martin Scorsese movie that's not about gangsters. Yeah, right. It's at that time period where he's making shit movies that people didn't like. <laughs> or pe- movies that weren't making money. Right. But I like this movie a lot. Okay. You know, it's no it's no gone sixty seconds. Also, real quick before we end this podcast and end the, the, the who we theoretically pick, purely on characters' names, Nick Cage has to win. He's got some really good character names. Out his there. character names are the coolest. And it's not obviously not his choice, but he, if he's picking roles, he picks good scripts with good names. <laughs> seriously, like, so like, Gone sixty seconds has one of my favorite character names of all time, which is fucking like it's like Memphis it's, it's something, right? Memphis Reigns, I yeah. think, is what it is. And Con Air is like, I feel like that's like Tennessee something or something like that. Yeah, so Memphis Reigns. Cameron Poe, never seconds. mind. That's name. Cameron Poe is Con Air. Her name's not Um name. But do he has some Memphis some is cool a good names. name. In The Rock, his name is really cool too. In The Rock, his name is... Um, Dr. Stanley. Stanley, God, Good, Stanley Goodspeed. <laughs> Goodspeed? That's a fucking cool name. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty good name. Have you... Real quick before we end the podcast. And, and then you get really... Benjamin Franklin. He's just His yeah. name is Benjamin Franklin in National Treasure. There's a theory that um, The Rock is actually another James Bond movie. Who's James Bond? Sean Connery. Oh, I could see that. And I don't know where I saw that from, but I was like, okay, that kind of makes sense. Okay. That kind of that makes sense. James Bond ends up in prison and he has to break out. Yeah. Uh, well, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We only talked about God War, but that's fine. And we talked about uh, The Matrix. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and The Matrix. Bullshitted. I meant about the but that... ones, but yeah. Uh, next week we're going to talk about uh, double up we're Bond double, movies. We'll double up because we definitely probably won't have a lot to say about Quantum, but just about how bad some parts are. Yeah. But we're going to review next week Casino Royale from '06 and Quantum of Solace from '08. Yes. And then from there we'll do breakdowns for sequel sequel episodes for Skyfall, and Skyfall, Inspector. And, Spectre. and then it should be time for um for uh, No Time to Die, the final. James Bond. The final Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig movie. I, this is the part that was... I guess we can talk about this later, but like... The sh- shit that's so crazy to me is that he this will be his fifth James Bond movie. And whenever I hear, especially on like Trash Station or whatever, I don't know how you know well they know like movies or stuff like that, but I assume that they read a lot online or whatnot. But it's like... All you ever hear about Daniel Craig is how much he hated playing James Bond. But he's still been in yeah. five fucking movies. What's crazier to me is not about five movies. It's about how long he's been James Bond. Yeah, he's been it for over 10 years, right? It's 15 years. Yeah, like that's crazy. Because Daniel Craig was only it, or not Daniel Craig, Pierce Brosnan Pierce was only Brosnan. it for like less than 10 years, I think. It has to be 10 years at least, right? Yeah, I think so. He's only got four what? movies. Eight years, maybe? Pierce Brosnan, James Bond. 
95 to 02. So, so less not than even that. 10 years. Yeah. That's only like seven. Yeah. What I, I mean, I guess that's the craziest part is, well, I guess between Contraband and Solace and Skyfall was like a long time. I think that was like four five or five years. years in between those two movies. Cause then the other ones yeah. have all come out about like two years in between each other. I think, isn't Skyfall like 2013? I think 2012? so. I think it was like 2013. 2012. 2012? 2012. Okay. Yeah. So like, yeah, four or five years between. Never, and, uh, never mind then. Cause Spectre was only like two years ago or three years ago. No, I guess it was yeah. like probably like 2018. I think it was 2016, I think. Was it? I thought it was like 2017, 2018. 2015. Damn. All right. Yeah. So. I just. And now, I don't know. And now, now here we are. Film on. Six years later with the finale. Jesus. So. Yeah, the time period between all of it, except for Casino Royale and Quantum, because those are pretty close together. But like all the rest of his are so spread out. If you just made them every three years, we'll be fine. Yeah. You know. Well, guys, we'll see you back next week with, uh, on the podcast. Check the vending machines with some James Bond. See you guys. See you guys.